It's an amazing thing what God does in our lives. And uh, today I have the privilege of leading you in presenting your tithes and offerings to the Lord today. I want to talk about abundance. How many has ever had too much of a good thing? Have you ever, <clears throat> have you ever had too much of something you don't want? Some, you know, sometimes I have an abundance of messes that uh, I sometimes feel like I just walk around with a push broom and the dust mop just, you exploded that cupcake, that, that cracker. Did you eat any of it? I'm not sure any of it. You're still hungry. I, I'm sure because it's all on the chair, the, the table, and the floor. How, did you eat any of it? Yes, it's just, it didn't even make it in your mouth. It's just here. It's a, this is a 10 wet wiper right here. That's what this is. <clears throat> an abundance. Sometimes we have an abundance of things and we don't value things we have a lot of. Sometimes we don't recognize what we have till it's gone. We, as a society, place value on things that is very rare. How many here like gold? Yeah, and all the ladies said amen. <laughs> and uh, how, how many here like silver? How many like diamonds? Okay. <laughs> you just got to get more rare. How many like rare meat? Medium rare? Still juicy? Yeah, yeah. <clears throat> Sometimes we, we just value things that are hard to get because that's kind of the way society runs. How many here like rubber? Every one of us used it to get to church today. Now, I tell you what, it would have been a long walk if you didn't have rubber. Which is more important, rubber or diamonds? Because without rubber, you're walking home. An abundance. What do you value? We have, you know, there's gold. Then there's fool's gold. There can be an abundance of fake. It's easier to find. And then I thought this one, you know, you don't have to type too wrong and you can get fool's God. There's an abundance of a fool's God. Isaiah chapter 55 and verse 6 says, Seek the Lord while he may be found. Call upon him while he is near. Do we value the abundance and the availability of God's presence in our life? Or is it because it's readily available? Every time I come to church, I know God will be there. And he'll probably be there when I get back. That we lower the value and we value other things that probably don't really do anything for our life higher than something that we need. Just because it's harder to find. I, I need him in my life. And I can find him. I can boldly come before the throne of God Do I value it? Or because it's always there and always available, maybe tomorrow. When I need it. You know, when I'm in trouble, I'll call on God. Right now I'm fine. I'd make my mortgage payment. I'd make my car payment. I got all 10 credit cards paid for this month. I made the minimum payment. I don't need God. I'm fine. I, I need him in my life. 
when I pay my bills and when I make the minimum payments to my bills. I need them on blessed days and not blessed days. I, I want to get to know him so that if a day comes I can't find him, I already know what he would say. What do you value? The other side of this, it's very easy for us to miss the valuable moments in our life. In between cleaning up the messes. In between changing those diapers. In the, in the effort to take care of life, do we miss the moments of life that happen? And we think, my God, there's an abundance of this. I just want five minutes of quiet to myself. There will come a time that you'll have five weeks of quiet to yourself and you'll be changing your tune. What you thought you didn't want as much of, you won't be able to buy. I have an abundance of life and I can waste it trying to get through it. And I'll never get it back. Fathers don't take a day off. What does that mean? You don't ever not to get, you don't ever get to not be dad anymore. Not because you have to, but because you realize what you've become. And that's a privilege. God's not taking a day off on you. To understand he fought for you. He fought so that he didn't have to miss a day or a time with you. He's always thinking, you know, I got one more lesson. <laughs> One more thing I can teach him. The question is, will they listen? Will they learn? I don't want to miss what he wants to teach me. And I don't want to miss what I'm supposed to teach others. See, my life's not about me anymore. That was the joke. To lighten this up a little bit, oh my. <laughs> Riley and I, are, we're sitting by the pond, water, small water feature that my wife let me build. People asked me if I got a permit for that, and I said, I asked my wife. And, uh, you know, we're sitting there, and he's like, I remember the day when we could just get on the bike, the motorcycles, and just go, and there was, what happened? And, you know, we're keeping children from their heads going underwater, and swimming lessons, and, you know, don't throw rocks at other people. You know, just, you know, simple things. What happened? Well, life. The process. God said, I'd like you to mature. 
So I will give you children. They will mature you. <laughs> All the lessons you were supposed to learn, boom, here they are. <laughs> and now you can spend the next 35 years trying to get them to learn it and then just sit back and watch them learn it when they get children. Yeah. There's an abundance, friends. We are not lacking. I do not need. I, I am satisfied. And I have to learn to not throw away the abundance that God has given me every day. It's challenging sometimes when you come out of your office and you think, <laughs> it was five minutes. It was just five. How did you accomplish so much in five minutes? I have an abundance, and it's valuable. It might be messy, but it's valuable. Do you understand there's an abundance in the availability of God right now in our lives and in our, in our land? Do you understand this land does not value it? What happens when you're in a land that there is no availability? All of a sudden, one page of the Bible doesn't even need a cover or anything else. Now, just one page is valuable. We live in a land where everyone's got ten translations and no one can you know, agree on the one they like the best. And it just sits there. I want to seek him while he can be found. I want to get to know him and count it valuable count it precious today because one day things may change and I will wish I had spent the time when I had the availability Father we love you today we thank you for your word thank you that we can give today You've given us avenues to give properly and correctly. It's not how much we give, it's obedient giving. So today, Lord, we want to practice obedient giving. From a thankful heart, we desire to give back to you today. Thank you that we have avenues that we can come and give in the house and we can give online. Father, I thank you that as we are obedient givers the blessings of God happen when we're obedient givers, when we do your word. We don't have to be over-obedient. We just have to be obedient. I can't buy you, God. I can't overpay my tithe to get better in with God. It, 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 the wrong heart. Now it's null and void. I just want, he says, I just want your obedience because that's the one thing I don't have. So it's not how much I give, it's the obedience and how I give it. Today, let our obedience today be our gift to God today. We thank you, Lord, for your word. Thank you that we're not just hearers, but doers as well. In Jesus' name, amen.